All right. Hello and welcome to Accelerate. I am Matt Stone. This is the podcast where we encourage and inspire CEOs, founders, and visionaries on their big leap journeys. We talk about the stories and strategies that will help accelerate you towards your big leap destination with purpose, humility, an open mind, commitment to growth, and recognition that the way we get there is at least as important as where we end up. And I'm so delighted because today we have a very special longer form conversation with the wonderful Shannon Hernandez. Shannon, thanks for joining. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> We've been talking about this for a little while, and so the day is finally here. So um, we could probably talk for like three days. So we're going to have to figure out how we're going to do this in a 30 to 45 minutes. <laughs> we can do it. I know we, we can. can do it. So, um, Shannon, you know, you are really a big leap specialist yourself because you've done one. Um, and I think you're, you've been in another kind of transition within your business. So is the name for your business now Joyful Business Revolution? Is that the, the latest, greatest? Is that, it's I want to get that right. The latest and greatest iteration. <laughs> Yes. Um, and, it, and this was a leap. Honestly, this was a big a leap within a leap within a leap. Right. Um, but just a little backstory on that is um, I brought in uh, like a head salesperson and she also does all the coaching in one of the programs. Um, and it just was really weird to have a business name M. Shannon Hernandez when I wasn't doing the selling and we're both out speaking and she's running a program. And so we're like, we got to solve this problem. Yeah, because <laughs> it's bigger than you. <laughs> it's bigger than you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's always the trouble with the name based business for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would love to just because we're all about big leap strategy and and all the things and the things that are less talked about is really what I'm wanting to help people understand is, you know, uh, doing a SWOT analysis, writing out your vision. Those are all great things, but over a protracted period, it takes more than just us to get us there. And, um, and there are always bumps along the way and it's how we adjust to those and learn from those. And, and again, we need to learn, uh, through other people as well in that. So I want to, you, you are so interesting because you, you have incredible artistic knowledge, uh, training and skills. You have been a teacher and you are now a super successful and growing, um, well, let's see, what do you call yourself? A business growth strategist for coaches and consultants. And you yeah. certainly are all of that and much more. Tell us how you went from teaching in, I believe, public schools, right? Yeah. Yeah. to running this super amazing business. How, yeah. how, when did it start? And I really, I'd love to hear like, what was your light bulb moment? What was that thing that, that moment when you said, I'm going to do this and, and what fed that? Yeah. Okay, good. So I was a teacher uh, 10 years in Charlotte, North Carolina, and five years in Spanish Harlem, New York City. Um, and I'm always up for a good challenge. So when I met my spouse online, I moved to uh, Brooklyn. Uh, I actually moved to Queens first. And it was there that I uh, was recruited as a public school teacher from New York City schools out of Raleigh, Durham. And I moved and I had landed here in June of a year, uh, you know, 10, 10, 15 years ago. Um, and gosh, it was hard. I didn't know anyone. Um, I had never been to a city. I grew up precisely between a corn and a bean field until I moved outside <laughs> of rural Charlotte. Um, and so here I was, and while I had been given a contract, uh, the contracted state, you have to get to New York and go find a school to work in. Now that's like finding a needle in a haystack, my friends. Like I was just mm. like, wow. Uh, so every day I went out and I found, um, you know, I was networking and trying to just find teachers that I could say, hey, are there openings at your school? So I got into the schools and I taught in Spanish Harlem and um, there was a, a hurricane that came through um, New York City. It was Hurricane Sandy. And we don't get hurricanes here, right? Like it is just not a thing, but this thing hit and it hit big time. And there was a lot of problems. And um, I was in year 14 of teaching and um, 
I did not pack up anything to take home. The weather reports are like the hurricane's coming. I'm like, the weather people always lie. I'll be back here tomorrow. And I just left all the papers at school. I left the lesson planning book. I left everything at school. And I went home, lived in Brooklyn at that point. And I was there a week. And I was there a week with nothing to do because I had immersed myself in my profession and I had nothing to do because everything was at school. And it was during that week, I call it the gift from Hurricane Sandy, that I was writing in my journal. And on the third day of that week, I wrote something that changed the course of my life forever. And it always makes me cry every time I remember it. And I went back on the fourth day and I read it and it said, I deserve to be happy again. And I realized my teaching, at least in the public school capacity, I was burnt out. I was tired of the testing. I was tired of the politics. I was tired of having to pass kids who did never do their homework. I was tired of being responsible for everyone. And that year in particular, they also had decided that all of our pay would be tied to test scores. And I was just tired of it all. Um, so I decided, well, this is my pause. This is the moment that I get to decide what I'm going to do. This was in October um, of my final year of teaching. And I read it to my spouse. I said, I, I don't want to live this way. I am not going to regret and just do things and, and be a robot, which is what I, I felt like. So it took that week of me having nothing to do um, work related for my whole nervous system, just to kind of calm down and then be like, Whoa, let's take inventory of what's going on. Wow. And that was it. You said October. So this is literally the very beginning of the year. It was, <laughs> what, what was that year like? Yeah, that year was, um, well, hopeful because I, I said, well, I'm going to do something new. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I didn't, I had really had no idea what I was going to do. And I was scared because no one had ever gone entrepreneurship route in, in my family. My dad's a police officer. My mom's a nurse. My sister's a teacher. My other sister's a banker, like secure, right? Secure mm -hmm. jobs. It's like what we, um, but I was hopeful and I was excited, even though I didn't know what it all meant. I was like, oh, I know this is the feeling I need to follow because it's, it's time for a change. Right. So we talk about in, in um, sort of the process that I help uh, CEOs and founders and visionaries with messaging. And they say, well, what does messaging mean? And I said, well, it starts with your internal messaging. And I, it starts with your PR, the PR firm that's working inside of you. Mm -hmm. It may be working for you or it might be working against you. What are the, what are the messages you're hearing? And I'm one I'm hearing you talk about is that big moment when your PR department put out something that was true to yourself back to you that was so true to yourself that it even to this day connects you with your heart. Yes. Yeah. And that was and the beginning of it. it. It was the beginning of it. And you know, they always say hindsight's 2020. So now we're 10 years into this journey, right? You talk about the journey. Um, and it's no surprise to me that the line I wrote is I deserve to be happy again. I have now, written my second book called Practical Joy. I have rebranded to Joyful Business Revolution. We are known around the world for joyful marketing strategies for coaches and consultants. Like that was a pivotal moment that is still having, you know, the trickle or the ripple effect of me reading that and saying, I don't actually operate out of joy very well. <laughs> right, right. There's a, there's a deficit here and I, and tell me about the people in your life that really helped you at that time yeah. in terms of processing that or seeing that and accepting that and moving forward. Yeah. Well, definitely my spouse, uh, Maria, we, um, you know, she hasn't always been on board with the joy, but now she's immersed in it. So she's completely on board with living a joy first lifestyle. Um, but we often joke, you know, we can look back now when she had moments in her career that weren't, she wasn't happy. I was stable in my career and she could take a leap. 
And then this was the moment where she was stable in her career. And so I felt I could take a leap. And that is super important. I think without her support of having saying, yeah, you know what, we'll figure it out. In fact, she said, and we laugh about this, right? She said, listen, you're making $70,000 a year as a teacher, pre-tax, right? I'm gonna give you three years. Let's agree to three years uh, to make $70,000 in a year. And we'll know that it, that it works. Well, I did that in the first six months. I was like, I'm not <laughs> wasting time. Like trying challenge, to <laughs> challenge accepted. <laughs> in fact, we made a hundred K in six months and I don't have any background in marketing, right? Like it yeah. is truly a gift. It was a gift of Sandy saying, wake up, like use your right. communication skills in another way. And so she has been a huge, huge supporter. The other person I would say is my very first business coach. Now, I didn't know anything about finding coaches, as most of us don't when we're not in this world, right? You don't have a coach as a teacher. You might have a mentor um, as a teacher. But I remember I had just gotten on Facebook, not very long before then. I did not have a big network, but I did post on my personal page, hey, I'm thinking about making a career change and starting a business. Who do you know who's a great business coach? I didn't even know what that meant. I just knew that was the words that I had. Right. And um, someone connected me to a lady out of, uh, uh, I want to say Boston. It's not Boston. Uh, Baltimore, uh, named Anastasia Bryce, and she's a foundations business coach. And I was with her for those first three years. And she helped me understand things like, you might be an online business, but you're not open every day from 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. the next day. Like, we're going to run this like a store so you don't burn out. When are you open? Right. <laughs> right? right. And she really taught me about the foundations of profitability and the foundations of being a business owner and the foundations of running an online business and how to communicate in such a way that was compelling so that people would at least reach out and say, hey, what are you up to? And I could have an entry point into a conversation. Mm, mm. Um, so I would say those two were the two biggest uh, supporters that I had early on. Mm. And can you remember some of the first, you know, the first few months when you had a few stumbles along the way? And what role did that coach or others play in helping you get through those, the, the things where you're like, oh man, that was a big mistake or yeah, I wasted yeah. that. I, you know, you, you decide to spend money on something and you're like, oh, what a waste. You know, I shouldn't have done that. You know, how did, how did you use your ecosystem yeah. of human support to make corrections and get insight? Yeah. Well, I will tell you, um, as you know, I don't let grass grow under my feet. So when I decided it was a yes, I was leaving. And then I, the hurricane helped with that. Um, I had a coach by November. <laughs> right. So, so October, you mean yeah. in the school year, November. Yeah, October, I finished that year out until the following June, because I did not want to leave halfway through. Um, so I kept teaching, but I hired a business coach that next month in November. And we had got everything ready for transition, which I really appreciated. My nervous system needed, like I, it was gonna be really big for me to say, I quit teaching and now I'm here. Like, and I shared that with her. My nervous system needs some sort of a transition plan so I can actually see that it's gonna happen, right? So fast forward to April. Now the school year ends at the end of June. So I've got two months mm -hmm. left. I have a lot of feelings about leaving. I'm scared. I'm wondering, am I going to miss the kids? And I do miss the kids. I don't miss all the other stuff, but I miss the kids, right? I'm doubting whether or not I'm actually going to get enough paying clients to make the 70K a year within three years, <laughs> right? Um, I'm tired because I was also a professor at Brooklyn College. So I was teaching all day, eighth grade in Harlem, getting on the train, going home, going to Brooklyn two nights a week, teaching till nine or 10 in the master's program and building a business in, in the spare time in between, right? So there was a lot going on. And I remember I got off the train in Park Slope, Brooklyn, and I, I walked to my apartment, it was Thursday. My coaching calls were at four o'clock. And I remember logging, it was a phone back then, getting on the phone and saying, listen, I need a plan B. 
I told my coach, I, I need a plan B. I am really scared. I, like, what if this doesn't work? And she said something that changed my life forever. And I say this to my clients all the time. And she said, Shannon, most of the time, people with a plan B never make plan A work. So are you all in for plan A? And I was Burn like, Burn the ships. <laughs> Holy shit. Because my dad says, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Have a plan right. B, have a plan C, have a right. plan D, right? But man, that was a pivotal moment. And from that mm. moment, I said, I am all in. And not only was I all in, I went and wrote a scathing memoir about why great teachers are leaving the school system. And I made sure no one would ever want to hire me again as a public <laughs> school teacher. <laughs> burn the ships. I didn't burn, burn the any ships. people. I burned no. the structure down. You, you, said, you burned the way back is what you did. <laughs> yes, that's did. the, that's, yeah. Yes, I did. Smart. You know what's coming up for me? It's kind of like um, instead of a plan B, what you need is a plan F, which is feedback. In other words, hmm. whatever plan you have is already great if it's true to yourself. If it's really who you are, you're valuable. Someone else can benefit from you. So then it's a matter of it isn't so much having a plan B like, well, I better go off and learn how to make donuts or you know whatever it is, drive a truck or write articles for a newspaper or something. Um, it's like you need to get a feedback loop that will help you learn what you need to learn so you can hone that plan. And that plan could end up radically changing, still being true to yourself, but it's not really a plan B. It's just you learning and growing at an accelerated, for lack of a better word, at an accelerated pace. I'm wondering how that played into your getting launched and uh, not to use that word, but you know, getting off the ground and then, and then taking flight even faster. How did you get the feedback you needed from clients, from, from others? What was your approach to that? Yeah. Did you even think about that? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, as a former teacher and professor, and I was a really good teacher and professor. I was one of those teachers who was always asking for feedback. And listen, eighth graders in freaking Spanish Harlem, they're going to give you some damn feedback, right? You got to have some thick skin. <laughs> they tell you things about yourself and they see things that you never even knew existed. <laughs> That's true. Right? Kids are like that, right? They're like are. <laughs> hashtag no filter, like hashtag no for filter. real. Like <laughs> no filter. Um, yeah. But I love that part because I've always had just this open, honest, I come to you, I ask feedback. I really do want the feedback, right? And sometimes you get feedback that's hard, but sometimes that's the most valuable feedback. Um, so, you know, when I came out of teaching, the first iteration of this business is I was a copy and content writer. And I just started in an industry where I had friends, which was the wedding industry. I had friends who were wedding planners and I said, hey, you got any conferences I can speak at or do you need your homepage redone? Um, and I really built that first two or three years. People knew me early on as a copy and content writer. I know about SEO. I could write your email newsletters. I helped you with your blogging. Like, and it was huge back then because we were right on the forefront of blogging and we were right on the forefront right. of people learning how to communicate through story and tell their new uh you know, through email with the story that's in the format of the newsletter, right? So it was very um, timely, if you will. What I mm -hmm. realized in feedback from, I mean, honestly, I, I'm a pretty self-aware person. So the first feedback I always listen to is how does my body feel? What I realized is three years in, I was actually on everyone else's deadline in that business. People would wait till last minute. Oh my God, I got something to launch. I need copy. Then I was scrambling around trying to get great messaging and my brain does not work like that. Some people's brains may work like that. I'm the person who needs to run with the idea for a week and yeah. toy around, right? On p paper with stickies. So people would push off the deadlines for the copy and the content because that just is the nature of people. And I realized my nervous system was so out of whack because I felt like then I was on a tight deadline and that's not how I think best. And so that was really important feedback actually for, for I mean, it was a feedback on 
uh, from clients of like, oh, I need it now. I'm like, I don't do stuff right now. Right. And then it was a feedback from my body saying, whoa, you are like really pushing me out of my comfort zone here and we need to pivot. And the pivotal moment in all of that was I went on vacation to the beach and there I was while everyone was having fun. And guess what I was doing? Writing people's copy. And I looked up and I said, um, this might be worse than teaching. Like, <laughs> <laughs> because now I'm actually at the beach and working while everyone else right. is having fun. And right. that next week I made a decision and I finished all those clients and I pivoted into a uh, marketing strategy at the time because I knew I can give you the strategy and it's your job to go implement and find your copywriter and go do those things. And I have been so happy since I made that pivot because I really truly get to run everything on my own timeline now. And I'm not waiting for feedback from the copy, mm -hmm. waiting for feedback from the mm -hmm. team and all the things that go into being the copywriter. So the feedback loop that really helped you in that sense, one of them was you're listening to yourself, being in touch with yourself how am I physically, spiritually, emotionally reacting to, and what is, what is, you know, your body tells you stuff. Oh. In my case, I get like skin when I'm, uh, beyond reasonably stressed, it comes out in my skin and I know I'm not alone in this, you know, I'll get like eczema breakouts and yeah. different, it's like, Oh, what's going on there? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Our bodies are so smart when we listen. Oh, they to are. They yeah. really, really are. They really are. Yeah. So here, so that's another great point though. You started off in a different industry. Mm -hmm. What remained the same though, was what your purpose is, is, you know, you, well, what was driving underneath that is I deserve to be happy. Yeah. What am I good at? What do I enjoy doing? What can I help others with? The industry is fungible in that sense. And you found your way to a tweak that wasn't a plan B. That was a, Correct. that was a plan iteration next. Correct. Yeah. And that's Which is a big all difference. Along, right. And so right. we we're all about organic content here. We don't use ads. We're getting ready to cross into the million dollar revenue probably this year. I I'm thinking we're pretty darn close. Do it. Um, and that feedback of just the, the joy, we call it pivoting to joy, pivoting to joy, pivoting. We, I do this every every day almost. In fact, this morning I woke up and I was like, I am not joyful about today at all. <laughs> Literally writing in my journal, yeah. right? I've got a huge trip to Switzerland. I leave Wednesday. Um, I usually have Monday off, but today I had to work because I got 18 days off with no computer coming up. I'm not working on vacation, right? And I'm like, okay, I need to find pockets of joy throughout today so that I can show up for the best for the interviews I need to do. I can show up best for the couple of clients that I have. And so I've done that all day long. So this pivoting back to joy and finding these pockets of joy is just now a way of living and a way of doing business that right. helps us fine tune all along the way to get right. where we have been. <clears throat> this, I don't know if this is a smart question or not, but for you, since you are in the business of joy, <laughs> yep. um, is there a difference between joy and happiness in your mind? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about that. Yeah, it's very misunderstood, joy versus yeah. happiness, right? Yeah, so, that's why I asked. <laughs> yeah, in, in my forthcoming book, Practical Joy, there's a Perfect. whole section devoted to this because it's a question that I get asked a lot. So the way that I have, have defined it and really others, uh, probably well before me in the positive psychology movement and therapists and everything, um, but it's still misunderstood. Happiness is the, it's an emotion and it's a reaction. It's a reaction to an external event. You have really great food and you feel happy for that 20 minutes, right? Those of us that are foodies know that. Um, you know, you go on a hike with a friend and you're happy and then life happens and you go on. So happiness is the result of an event, external event that happens. Joy is a way of living that is cultivated from seeds you plant within you. And some of those seeds are gratitude, some of those seeds are hope, but a lot of those seeds are like, what would bring me joy right now? Mm. And it is not a question that enough people ask. Mm. 
at all. They're mm-hmm. asking the wrong question. What would make me happy? And then they have to go find it, right? They have to go to the vacation. They have to go whatever to the hike. Yep. They have to go out to eat. But when you really pivot back to joy is an inside job and joy is your responsibility, right? then you really start looking at everything you're doing. Well, if my schedule is packed today, I did make that decision consciously. And what would bring me joy today is that after every single call, I'm up and on my patio for five minutes of sunshine. Right. That is an inside job of making those little micro decisions along the way. I I love the way you're differentiating. And I think of happiness as a fleeting thing nothing wrong with it but if i'm chasing happiness i'm chasing a fix yep it's better to like be doing things and then realize oh i'm really happy right now and maybe in 10 minutes i won't be and that's okay too yep whereas joy is a cultivation it's a practice it's something that you do with intention and in order to feel joy to experience joy to live joy it means actually being in touch with the things that don't feel good too because you have to be able to take those things and turn them into something positive for you. Yeah. Why am I having this negative feeling? Like you said before, what does that, what is that feeling telling me that I need to learn from? Is it something I need to heal in myself? Something I need to be paying attention to and get out of my life (laughs) that's not working for me, like the schedule. (laughs) Yeah. And that's where that nurturing of your own joy kind of garden, if you will, um, it's it's much more deep and complex. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So if you could go back, and this is kind of, a, it's an often asked question, but I still like it. Mm-hmm. What does Shannon today go back 10 years ago and tell Shannon then? Don't have a plan B. <laughs> no plan B. Don't, don't listen to your family. Seriously, they don't, they, they do have your best interests, but they're also all stuck in their own stuff and can't see the future. Seriously. Right. Um, I would also say get a really good mentor. And here's the key, not just any old mentor, somebody who has been where you are and not 10 years ago either, but within the last year or two. So it's still fresh and they are, you know, they have a mentor. I always ask this to my mentors. Who's your coach? Who's your mentor? Because if they can't give me any names, I don't hire them. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty clear about that, right? Like mentors need mentors. If we're hiring mentors, everyone should have a mentor, right? So make sure your person's walking the walk and talking the talk. Make sure that the person that you choose to be your mentor or your coach or your guide, however you want to say that, um, still remembers what it's like to be where you are right now, because I think that is a powerful mentor Mm. and don't have a plan B. And don't have a plan B. All great advice. And I actually want to go back to one little thing that you said that I think is actually more important than the time that we've given it so far. And that was don't listen to your family. (laughs) Now, I wasn't sure if you wanted to go there. I think that's a really powerful point that resonates with me a lot. Mm. And I don't think that necessarily means your family's unimportant to your journey, they're not supportive. I think it's it's putting people, wh- you know, first of all, feedback from people is, it's true, it's valuable for you, it's also largely a reflection of their worldview, their experiences, their fears, their dreams, their hopes, their desires for you. So you gotta remember that's them first, everyone's self-centered. <laughs> Um, they don't know what it's like to be in your shoes and family especially has their own agenda, whether they know it or not, because they have expectations around what family should do and mean and how we, and, and then you, as we all know, there's other layers of things that get added onto that. So I just want to talk to you, explore this a little bit when I'm cultivating my support ecosystem. If somebody cares about me, they're in my ecosystem. If they don't care about me, don't like me at all, then you know they're not gonna really be in my active ecosystem. Mm-hmm. But those people are not all similarly situated. Correct. So how do you how do you approach those different people and what how do you kind of segment the different people in your ecosystem and how you interact with them to get the most out of 
them for yourself, but also I know you're a giver. So it's a, it's a mutual rewarding thing at its heart. So just tell me a little bit about how you approach that. Oh, of course. <laughs> so if you're watching the video, <laughs> what we have here is a bullseye. I call this the energetic access map. And it's how to honor your energy while you grow your business and joyful life, right? And so I actually teach on this because I had to figure it out for myself, right? So if you think about your, your core group is right here near the bullseye, and then you work your way out, I have different layers of people that have different access to me, right? And yep. listen, this was not a conversation I was having to have outside family, but in a business conversation, I was having to have even three years ago, but it is true what they say. The bigger you grow, the more you're going to have to limit the amount of people have access to you because you're going to be exhausted if you're talking to all those people all the time. Right. Right. So right. in terms of the family, um, you know, I just don't talk to my family about my business. They don't get it. They don't want to get it or they would get it because they're not dumb, right? Um, <clears throat> my parents still ask 10 years in, now, what do you do all day? Or you'll hear their <laughs> friends ask them, like we're out to yeah. dinner when I go home and they're like, oh, she talks to people on Zoom and tells them how to make money. That's that's as close as they can get, right? Okay. Which is fine. Yeah. All right. Because we'll take it. Because don't really give a shit either. So I'm it could be, I was going to say, it could be way worse. I mean, that's, that. <laughs> I mean, I guess they're in the ballpark. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not completely on another planet. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> Matt, what's interesting is <clears throat> my dad, you know, my dad has some great things about him. And one of the things that he really taught me us, all of us children very early on was how money works and how you save money and why retirement's important. And these things that I actually believe are really important it's helped me have the money I have and keep the money I have and invest the money I have to this day. He started very young with us. Um, and when I left teaching, he threw an absolute fit. Now I was 32. <laughs> all right. I was I well past married twice by then and like living in New York city on my own. And you would think that my life was ending. I was throwing away a guaranteed job. I was throwing away my retirement. I was leaping into the unknown, which was true and had no plan B to fall back on. How dare I do such a thing? How irresponsible. What, what are you going to do for when you're, you're going to work the rest of your life? Well, now I get to, you know, when he asks, I don't volunteer it. Once in a while, I'll say, how's your business doing? And because my dad is a money guy and a numbers guy, I talk mm -hmm. to him in the terms of the money. That's the currency, right? Right. And I say mm -hmm. to him, well, dad, we just had a, a $75,000 month. And he goes, how is that even possible? That's more than I've ever made in a whole year. Yeah. I said, I know, dad, I took that leap. Well, are you saving for retirement? Are you spending it all in <laughs> or traveling around? Like, then it goes into like all the judgment things, right? We're at the casino. Yeah, I mean, you know. Right? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Now, now am I irresponsible because I have money, right? Right. Um, so there's a flip side to that point is I can talk to my dad in terms of the money, but he still can't grasp like what, mm -hmm. what it's doing, right? And we're not mm -hmm. flashy people. So it's not like we have new cars and... <laughs> flashy things right. to, to, to show our money off. Um, but I try and reassure him when he asks, I don't volunteer it. Um, and so that's really, I think the, the crux of this is in my family in particular, I know what language they speak. It's not necessarily money. It's, are you going to be okay in the future? That's a really all my dad wants to know, right? If you got divorced, if you, your house burnt down, whatever, do you have money to be okay in your future? And the answer is yes. I can give him some numbers and he seems pacified until the next year when we <laughs> again, right? But outside of that, I'm not talking to my family about business, any of them. They don't get it and they don't need to get it. It's not part right. of their world, right? And, and I think there's a bigger point here and the family part is, is key. And I just say there's a broader, uh, I think, I don't know if it's a principle, but something that I've learned along the way is you're going to hear feedback. People will tell you often unsolicited, 
oh, that's a good idea. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, you should do this. You should do that. I mean, just go out into a group of people and tell them you're doing a new diet and see how much unsolicited feedback you get. Because everybody's worried about their bodies and weight and they're all trying different things or think they should be. And what they're telling you is what they're trying to tell themselves. And in those situations, it's usually not very useful feedback. So if you take that, what they tell you and you go, oh gosh, I better change my messaging because cousin Frankie said X, Y, Z, or even some associate who doesn't really know, you can't take it all with the same weight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, uh, we could go on for days, but I think this is a good stopping point because we've gotten a lot of the basics out there and they're not, they're, they're basic, but not simple and they are extremely important. So for anyone out there who is sitting at their desk, either at home or in an office, or they're thinking out on a walk while they're listening to this. Gosh, I I am I want more joy in my life. I need to take a big leap. What should they do next other than find a mentor? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think first of all, you should call Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Call. Um Matt's like really skilled at helping people take leaps because he's taken lots of leaps in his whole life. Um But if you're a coach and a consultant and you're like, oh man, this joy stuff, it sounds pretty dang refreshing. Well, there's a reason because it is refreshing. Um, And you can find us at joyfulbusinessrevolution.com. We also have a Facebook group where I do a lot of teaching, um, serving and loving in that Facebook group. Um, And it's called Joyful Business Revolution for coaches and consultants. Yeah, and I, I, I think this is right. If you are a coach or consultant, so in other words, you've already kind of taken some kind of leap or you're coaching, you're, you're in a coaching business and that's really what you've been doing, but you want to really take it to the next level. And we hear the word authenticity thrown out there all the time. And I don't know what it means anymore because it's kind of been bastardized, I guess, is the word that comes up to mind. It's just been, it's diluted in its meaning. Yeah. Shannon will help you find out what that really means for you. And that's what will be the accelerant is that it's you, it's more you and less the stuff that's not you. Yeah. Um, and if you're thinking about making a huge change to your business, you're thinking about hiring a whole new, you know, executive team, you want to step back and let other, and you, it's a, it feels like a very scary gap that you have to jump over career change or whatever. I'm here for your strategy around that to create the conditions for you to be able to thrive in that. So, um, there's, Plenty of of help here between the two of us. And then between the two of us, we know a lot of other folks who I know you're not shy to recommend others, too, if there's some other need. I am such a connector at heart. Yeah, I I love connecting people. (laughs) There's just there's few things more rewarding. And isn't that the crossover to teaching? Yeah. I mean, when you're you're in public school, even with all the other difficulties, seeing that young person, that child the light bulbs go on in that moment. It's just so fulfilling. Well, guess what? We get to do that in this realm too. And it, yeah. it's not children, but it's it's pretty satisfying. So yeah. Shannon, uh, I'll put your information in the, co- in, um, in the post, of course. Uh, you can find both of us on LinkedIn. Yes. Where else would they go to find you online? Um, my business, uh, my website, joyfulbusinessrevolution.com and Facebook group, if you're in the Facebook camp. Uh, I've got a lovely group over there. You can find us there as You've well. You've nurtured an incredible community. And that's that's another whole topic, actually, for an entire separate podcast about how that community then becomes an amazing, in addition to other things, feedback loop. So, um, Shannon, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, I look forward to speaking with you again very soon. Thank you.